Good evening and welcome to St. Faustina Parish. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. The second collection this weekend is for St. Anthony School. Please be as generous as possible. Join us on Zoom for Vino et Veritas on Tuesday, January 17th at 7 o'clock. Father Adam will be discussing the parables. The Prospect Prayer Walk is back. The next meeting is Tuesday, February 2nd at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Prospect at 6.30. Please be sure to make all checks for any kind of contribution out to St. Faustina Parish. If you have checks issued by your bank, please call the bank and have them change the name on the check. They lived in very difficult times in history. 
But it was then that they really relied on their faith. And it was what gave them unity and able to have peace. And so, my friends, I'm so happy that you're here to celebrate this second Sunday, an ordinary time where we come before our Heavenly Father, and now we ask Him at the beginning of our Mass to please shed upon us His divine mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns, with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. 
Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. The response oral psalm is, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocaust or sin offerings you sought not, then said I, Behold, I come. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God and that is not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he had said, and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him, and said, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated, means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying. And they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who had heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother, Simon, and told him, We have found the Messiah, 
which is translated Christ. They brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Who was your favorite teacher in school? Do you have one? A lot of times I find that a, a favorite teacher is usually just one or two folks. A favorite teacher really breaks through to the students. And I remember my favorite teacher. <laughs> my favorite teacher was my freshman English teacher, Mrs. Kunkel. And she was amazing. She could make anything fascinating. This woman was so incredibly intelligent, so cultured. I mean, she took the Canterbury Tales and made it, like, fascinating. I don't know if you ever read the Canterbury Tales, but if you can take the Canterbury Tales and make it incredibly fascinating for, like, a 14-year-old kid, that's pretty impressive. See, she could break through. And I remember hanging on her every word. She was so incredibly intelligent and just understood things so much. I don't know if you have a favorite teacher that you remember. And if you do, you remember them so well and you remember what they taught and you probably hung on their every word. What's rabbi mean in the God? Teacher, right? He was a teacher. And the disciples hung on his every word. And so do we. We even stand up in the Mass when we have to listen to him, don't we? We actually stand up because of the honor and then we have to pay such close attention to what he says. You have to listen so closely to Christ. Every word that he says. And he asks them a question. What's that first question he asked them in the Gospel today? Do you remember? What was the first question that our blessed Lord asked Andrew and that other disciple? What are you looking for? It seems so simple, doesn't it? But he turns and the first thing he says to these first disciples who are going to become apostles, what are you looking for? It seems simple enough, but that's a profound question for Andrew and the other disciple, and for you too. <laughs> Our Lord, is he at, like when you think of it, if he asks you right now, what are you looking for? And I bet you there's all sorts of things that we could say. An end to this virus. We're looking for an end to that, aren't we? We're looking for maybe some more security. We're looking for stability. We're looking for so many things, aren't we, in our life? That question, what are you looking for? There's all kinds of things. But you know, I'll dare to say that each and every one of us in this church right now we're all looking for the exact same thing. Yeah, it's true. How old or young we are, what do we do for a living? And you know what? If I was to ask everybody in Slippery Rock, or over in Prospect, or in West Sunbury, or Harrisville, or if I asked all the people that live in this area, what are you looking for? The answer would be the same. No matter who they were, and you know what? I'm going to say one more thing. If I could ask everybody in the whole world that has ever lived, the billions and billions of people, if I said to them, what are you looking for? You know what? Their answer is always going to be the same. Every person that's ever lived. What are you looking for, Jesus says. And the answer is very simple. 
love. That's it. Anyone that's ever lived, no matter what they've been through, no matter who they are, all anyone has ever wanted in life is to be loved. That's what we're looking for. Now, sometimes there's an old song. I'm not sure how old it is. I don't even remember who sang it. But I think the gentleman said, I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> I think that's how it went. In the wrong faces. We can do that too. We might look for love in all kinds of different areas. I won't go into the different areas that we look for love in. But our blessed Lord turned to Andrew and that disciple and said, what are you looking for? Tonight in our prayer, let's ask him, what are we looking for? And let's realize at the same time that we have the answer. We're all just looking for love and acceptance for who we are. And that's why I'm so glad you're here, because we find love here unconditional love right here on this altar that we receive. It's that beautiful sacrament of love and charity, the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, now we stand together and what unifies us is our love of God. And so let us say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. Now, my friends, we turn to our Heavenly Father, who is so in love with each one of us, and so we bring before Him these prayers and petitions. For those that lead our church, may we receive God's guidance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that suffer oppression throughout the world may experience the peace of Christ in their lands and in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with chronic physical ailments, may they grow strong under the gentle and nurturing hand of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus' love may conform us evermore to his own heart. As we strive to follow him more closely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the souls of the faithful departed may find eternal peace in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our, our 
special petition today is for the people of the parish. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear our prayer. We gather tonight bringing so many intentions and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We certainly offer in prayer the United States of America. We pray that God may shed His grace on this wonderful country and all of our citizens. We can see each other as brothers and sisters who work to make our world a better place as we also in our nation look toward the memory of the very Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We ask that we can also work like him to be sure of the freedoms and rights of all people in our world. We ask that God unify us now and take this virus from our midst as our parish communities come together and we certainly now pause. And we offer to our Heavenly Father the secret prayers that we know that we are in need of His help. And we are sure and trust in His divine mercy. And we ask all of our needs in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grant us, O 
also, Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Welcome you all here 
tonight. It's so wonderful to be able to celebrate with you. I had mentioned to many folks on the way in. There's a free book back there by Matthew Kelly called uh, I Made God Laugh. I Heard God Laugh, I think. And that's a, it's a really, um, he's a really wonderful author. So if you want to take one of those books where you know someone that could use it, please take a couple with you home. We also have those calendars in the back if you'd like. There's also a mass intention form in the back, too, just to keep that in mind, taking intentions for our masses as, as the months come up. I mean, I absolutely love our books, and I know I've talked about it, and I just get so excited about it, because it was such a work in progress. And it's so wonderful to see St. Faustina on the cover of our bulletin, and she's such a beautiful saint. So please take the bulletin home, you know, take a look at it, read it over. Uh, there's so many things going on. I want to thank you so much. There's that second collection tonight for the St. Anthony School collection. St. Anthony's in the fall school, but I lived in Oakland. They're, one of their uh, main places is in, um, is in Shadyside, near a church called Sacred Heart, and they do just such wonderful things. At St. Anthony's School, they would come over and help us a lot with the cathedral. Wonderful kids, beautiful kids. And so, thank you so much in, in advance for your generosity, um, certainly to our parish collection. I, we really appreciate that and need that, as well as your um, incredible generosity to those wonderful kids and their teachers at the St. Anthony School. Um, so, that's, that is the second collection this evening. And I wanted to just call your attention again to, as Ron said, all checks payable to St. Faustina Parish, if you've been messaging that. I know it's like I've been writing 2020 on, every, on everything, you know? It's like, yeah, it takes some time to get used to it. So, but if you can just try to get used to that as well. I think Goose is going to do a women's Bible study beginning on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., all the information there in the bulletin to contact Katie. She's going to take uh, just some women through it. I think it'd be a great thing. You know, just to meet with Katie for a little bit, and you'll talk about the readings for the upcoming Sunday. And it's a great opportunity for, for women to come together and, and share faith. You know, so it's a beautiful thing. I, I mean, my whole life is on Zoom right now. I didn't even know Zoom existed last year. Okay. Um, the nice thing about Zoom is that you can just, you know, sort of turn off your camera and just kind of do, I would never do it, never mind. I would never do that. I would never do that. Um, but no, there's so many calls on Zoom. But you know, I want to, there's some, a fun Zoom call for me, such a thing this week. The parables of Jesus. Um, I just thought, Katie said, uh, Father, what would, you, what would you want to do? And I thought, let's talk about the parables. You know, because they're so important, obviously. But there's so much there. There's so many cool things to talk about and discuss. We'll, we'll scratch the surface. Maybe you can come to the call with some of your favorite parables and talk about why they're your favorite parable. You know, we can talk about that on Zoom. And then you can um, certainly have your refreshment right there. At Vino at Veritas, we have a little social before you. Remember, then we go into the chapel. Well, you'll be sitting right in the comfort of your own home. Please invite a lot of people to kind of join us. It's just a way of trying to be unified. I'm going to invite a really good friend of mine, um, Johnny Walker, to join us. Um, <laughs> it took a minute. Now you know what I like. Um, but anyway, no, but it's going to be a really fun time. It's kind of laid back evening. Just to kind of have fun to talk about our parables. I hope you can join us um, there for a little bit. And certainly I'm all... Go to the back to get to me if you could just stay seated and then we'll we'll uh, we'll dismiss it in an orderly way. Thank you.